Having an in-depth understanding of the molecular profile and the biology of the tumor over the years, we're able to target the disease in a more personalized, sophisticated manner. It still means personalizing the care for that particular patient using the right chemotherapy combination, but it also means personalizing it for the tumor type, for whether it's HER2 expressing, PDL1 ex overexpressing, and whether a VEGF targeted drug would work well in that disease. And really putting all this together to get the best care for these patients in a multidisciplinary fashion with the whole team involved along the way. I personally feel having the pain and palliative team work alongside you, having something like the MCCM services, which go into the house of the patient and help support the patient and the family, brings better outcomes. Um, have fewer hospital admissions because these patients are really taken care of well in the outpatient setting. So where do we see uh, the treatment in uh, gastroesophageal cancer proceeding with the uh, advent of new research and other strategies? We had a lot of hope uh, about the genomic profiling data, and I think it has been fruitful to a certain extent in uh, validating HER2 testing and now MSI testing as biomarkers for specific therapies. Uh, although the, these data are emerging, uh, we've also found targets that have not been so useful. Uh, drugs that target the EGFR pathway have universally been unsuccessful. Drugs that target the MET amplified pathway have also been universally unsuccessful. And there are ongoing trials of agents targeting the uh, FGF pathway. Uh, from genomic sequencing, we can identify some small subsets of pa patients that may have targetable mutations for clinical trials. And we're also elucidating resistant mechanisms that if a patient has a HER2 amplification, perhaps they have amplification or activation of a parallel pathway that might convey resistance. So I think these data are generating hypotheses that potentially we can look at combination strategies trying to target a pathway and also potential resistance mechanisms. So, uh, the other uh, area I think that's going to move us forward now that we have some signal of benefit for immunotherapy drugs is looking at combination immunotherapy strategies. Uh, how can we make a non-immunogenic tumor hot in order that it will stimulate an immune response? So immunomodulatory approaches, adding co-stimulatory drugs, trying to identify better biomarkers in tumors are all the part of ongoing active research. Uh, we do know that uh, uh, the patient's cancer is often fluid and that when patients are exposed to treatments, we may engender resistance. So we have data from our center that in patients that uh, progress on HER2-targeted therapy, about 15 or 20 percent actually become HER2-negative on repeat biopsy. So there's a lot of interest in resampling the patient's tumor during the course of therapy. One non-invasive way to do this is what's with what we call a liquid biopsy, looking at circulating tumor DNA. One advantage is uh, if you just want biopsy one tumor, you get one sample. And sometimes different metastases are heterogeneous. They may have different mutations. Uh, some tumors may respond, others may be resistant. The advantage of uh, sampling the blood is that you're looking at uh, uh, tumor DNA that's released from all the different cancers in the body. So non-invasive testing with uh, circulating tumor DNA assessment is a very promising research strategy to, uh, certainly it's bearing fruit in lung cancer where we sample patients and identify that they have EGFR mutations and they develop new mutations and we have drugs for those patients. So I think the dynamic sampling of uh, patients' tumors with uh, circulating tumor DNA is a very promising strategy and hopefully will lead to uh, focusing and directing treatment and potentially uh, en enlisting patients on clinical trials. Another fascinating area is um, a minimal residual disease. Uh, if a patient's been rendered free of their cancer and had adjuvant treatment, do we have measures that indicate that they're, they may be at higher risk of recurrence if they still have uh, residual circulating tumor DNA? That's an approach that's being exploited in colorectal cancer to design uh, adjuvant strategies. The biggest ongoing challenge in gastric cancer is that it's, there are no good screening methods to diagnose it early. Most of our patients are diagnosed in, in the advanced stage either locally advanced, unresectable, metastatic stage, at which point the treatment generally is palliation to control the symptoms and improve their quality of life. And the greatest challenge is maintaining their quality of life, keeping them pain-free, um, giving them um, ways and means to make it to the appointment, uh, and really maintaining their life goals, so to speak. And that really requires a good supportive team around you to help do that.